Yo, what's going on guys, Arax here and welcome back to another Destiny video and of course more Rise of Iron. As you guys know, I was in Seattle last week, Activision flew me over so I had a chance to go to Bungie, capture loads of gameplay. Yesterday I uploaded the first campaign mission, hopefully you guys had a chance to see that. I will link it down below. Of course if you are trying to keep things fresh and you don't want spoilers then by all means completely ignore that. But if you do want to see it then it is linked down below. But today I'm going to upload a complete playthrough of the brand new or the remastered or reprised Sepix Prime Strike Devil's Lair this time called Sepix Perfected. Now Devil's Lair is actually one of my favourite strikes from, in fact, just the whole lot together. It's one of my all-time favourite strikes. I really enjoy it. I feel like it's paced really well. It's got cool sort of chaptered encounters that like I really enjoy it and it just doesn't really have any parts that I'm like, oh, this is really annoying or you get kind of stuck in. Plus, it's also the first Nightfall that I actually soloed. But anyway, that aside, before I get started, I want to give a massive shout out to My Name is Bife. We were both over in Seattle. We had a chance to go and capture it and we both played through this strike. However, my capture got a bit messed up. The audio was a bit messed up. So... He very kindly sent me his playthrough, so what you're seeing here is his perspective. There are a couple of sections in here. I'm going to cut in a small clip from mine just to show you something different, which we'll get to in a second. But for the majority of this video, this is all from My Name is Bife, so massive shout out to him. You can find a link to his channel, his Twitter, and his Sepix Prime or Sepix Perfected Strike playthrough in the description box down below. Plus, if you guys are lore nerds, then definitely swing by because he is your guy. But anyway, let's speak about this strike. So I am actually really pleased with the way this strike panned out because if you guys cast your mind back to Taken King and we had the Takenified strikes, let's be honest, they were, I mean, they were all right, but they weren't exactly the most exciting thing. Truth be told, for the most part, what they did was basically just replaced the enemies that were in that strike with Taken enemies. And the flow of the strike fundamentally remained the same. Largely, there wasn't really any changes to the bosses. Sometimes there were a few tweaks here and there, but for the most part, the strike that you knew before was still the same, albeit with some new enemies. So, while it did give us some variety, it did give us like a chance to kind of replay something in a slightly different way, it wasn't the most exciting thing in the world. However, the Reprise Strike, the Sepix Perfected one, is actually quite different in a really, really cool way. Of course, the core flow, the core direction of the strike remains the same. I mean, it is, you know, a Reprise Strike and not a brand new strike, so you will still hit the same milestones, but there are some really cool changes. So I'm going to speak for a couple of minutes about this, talk about some of the things that I liked and whatnot, and then I will leave you to watch the rest of it. But let's start from the beginning. So the first thing you'll find that when you kind of go through with your sparrow, you kind of walk up the staircase, you get to this sort of bridge part. And prior to that, it's normally just a window. You can look in there, you see the engines, and you then move around and take out the uh, enemies on the site. But this time, of course, the metal has been cut out by the splicer servitors. Of course, you know, they're cutting up everything. Who knows what they're doing, but either way, they are messing up the place. There's a lot of lasers over there, plus there are loads of those kind of SIVA power sources in there so you can shoot a load from the bridge plus you can actually go all the way down past the usual route and then turn back and go into this room so i didn't actually have a chance to explore it too fully you do want to be careful when you go in by the way there are also a couple of like mounted turrets that will kill you very very quickly so take them out and then uh you can of course look around i would imagine there's probably going to be like a hidden siva cluster in there i didn't find it myself but it seems like a bit of a weird room like you can go in there but there's nothing to actually do in there so i would imagine then if you poke around, there'll probably be something hidden. But anyway, that room is new. That room is kind of different. You can get in there, but there's not really much to do there. So, of course, you then go through to the first main chapter point of this strike, which is, of course, where you activate the station and you then have to defend it for a number of waves against enemies, which in the past were Fallen and Hive. But this time around, they are Splicer Fallen and again Hive. So fundamentally, the uh, kind of encounter plays out the same way. Sometimes the enemies do come from slightly different places to where they're used to. So of course, if you're used to watching specific doors in the strike, you might need to adjust your tactics slightly. There are also only two waves you have to defend for. But once you've done that, then you move on to the next section. So this one is largely the same, just with slightly different enemies. But flowing through to the next bit, of course, you go through the main rooms, you then get out to where the Fallen Walker or the Spider Tank always used to spawn. However, in this strike, it actually plays out differently each time you do it. So in the footage you're going to see in this one from My Name is Bife, there's not a tank at all. In fact, Hive spawn in. There are a load of Hallowed Ogres that basically just fill the place and you just go through blitzing the different Ogres, blitzing the different Wizards, all the different Hive enemies. And once you've just cleared all the enemies, you just pass through. And in some ways it kind of makes it easier because you don't have one central big target to focus on. You can kind of just sort of like split your focus between these different enemies. But either way, that is one permutation and you're going to see that in the gameplay. However, when it gets to the end of that section, I'm going to quickly cut over just so you guys can see because one of the other variations, the one that I got when I was playing through, is against the new splicer tank. So pretty much the same spider tank as before, only this time it's Siva infused. And it looks really cool, but it behaves the same way. So, you know, shoot the legs, drop it down, top opens up, shoot it in the head, job done. So that's one of the first places where it can change, you know, or mix up each time you do it. So while there will obviously be a finite number of permutations, it's at least nice to know that there will be some variety, you know, from time to time. 
Then finally moving through to the final boss, and this is where the big changes take place. So again, it's Sepix Prime, right? So the core of the fight remains the same. He's a floating eyeball, he shoots laser beams at you, you enter the area for the first time, you take out the dregs, his shield drops, and you start dealing damage. However, how this fight differs is that at certain milestones during the fight, he will put his shield back up, and the only way you can take that shield down is by using a Scorch Cannon. But this time around, there are three different Scorch Cannons. There's a Solar one, an Arc one, and a Void one. So basically, when you get his health to a certain milestone, his shield will go back up. You will then fight enemies for a while. A Scorch Captain will drop in. You kill him, he drops his gun, you pick it up, and you fire it at Sepix. Do be careful, though, because you only have one bullet. So if you miss, or he disappears or moves, then you have to wait for the next Captain to come in before you can take a shield down, which, of course, isn't too bad on a normal strike. But in something like a Nightfall, if you were, like, really, really being pressured, you want to make sure you hit the mark. But he's not exactly hard to miss, so to speak. So you do that. Shield goes down, repeat the process, drop some life, and then the next shield goes up, which is, of course, a different element. Another captain comes in, and you repeat the process. You get the idea. That's how it differs. So, fundamentally, again, the fight itself basically plays out the same way, but there's this new mechanic in, which actually makes it really good fun. So, I definitely really like this strike. It's definitely probably going to be one of my new favourite ones, and I definitely think there's a lot more inventive gameplay in this one, as opposed to just saying, hey, let's replace all the enemies with splicers and just call it a new strike. They've actually kind of gone and altered some of the mechanics a little bit and made it a lot more fun. So that is my general consensus on the Sepix Perfected Strike. And of course, once you complete the strike, at the very end, there are the special chests where if you have a skeleton key, you can go there and get your strike specific reward. Sadly, I didn't have one, but you will see it at the end of the footage. Anyway, that's it from me. So again, massive shout out to my name is Bye for letting me use his footage. You can find links to all of his stuff in the description box down below. Hopefully you guys enjoy the gameplay. Let me know in the comments down below what you think of the strike. And thanks for watching. Take it easy. Catch you next time. Peace out. Uh, yeah. We've definitely got Hive. And apparently they hold a grudge because they're mad. And I think they're letting the Fallen know it. Deja vu. Me, you, a sea of devils and an angry machine god waiting on the other side. I'd say lock and load, but I'm sure you already did.
Why would the splicers rebuild Sepix? They already have Siva. I can make a guess. Maybe an offer to the other devils. A show of power? You know, in Siva we trust, and in Siva all things are possible. Get in there, and show them that their god is nothing but metal and tech. Sepix perfected in all his glory.
prepare for Sepix to run this time. Sepix was the Splicer's next big play. Present a god for all to worship. Then control the flow of ether to control the house. I guess they didn't factor us into the plan. Any wrench we can throw in their works is a good thing. Guardian, you make one hell of a wrench.